and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi there, folks. I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad, Brad Heide, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. And I have a foot to stand on, Brad. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about pain on the outside of my foot and easy self-treatment to try. That's what I like to hear. Something easy, Bob. Now, the reason I head down this path, Brad, is my mm. wife was having pain on the outside of her foot. It turned out it was something else. It was not this. Right. But I thought, well, I studied up on it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Let's... You just didn't pull it out of your back pocket? No, she, I did. You did. Your wife must be... She's probably going to give my, you a back rub She's or my inspiration. That's right. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to Ooh. us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. We don't know what we're giving away, do we? Yeah. Uh, well, but so they can just look. Yeah, go to the giveaway section. Go to Bob and Brad. Go. Uh, it's a Saturday video, which means tomorrow we'll start giving away right. something. So, yeah, you can figure it out tomorrow. Yeah. If you go to Facebook, it'll also be pinned to the top of the page there. Just, yeah, subscribe to our Facebook and you'll always know what's right. going on. Right, yeah. Go to Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok if you want a 60-second version of our program. And now we have podcasts out there with us talking, but we got some outstanding experts we're interviewing. That's so right. So don't miss a one. So there's a lot of things that could be causing pain on the outside of your foot. This is just Maybe one we should of them. tell them what that is you got in your hand. Uh, this is a foot. <laughs> yeah, so we got the, you know, the bone structure, the skeleton of a foot. So And there's 28 bones in the foot. Did you know that? Well, I, I'd have to you count. You want to count them? No. Uh, I'll, all I'll, right. I believe you, Bob. And there's lots of ligaments and tendons, mm -hmm. and so a lot of things can get hurt. But what we're going to talk about today is cuboid syndrome. Um, that's so a the cuboid is a... A specific bone. Okay. Kind of a square-shaped cuboid, I think. Yeah. That's what and we're going to show you exactly where it is on Bob's foot. Yeah, and we're going to show it to you on this, too. On this too. But yep. signs you might have cuboid syndrome. Mm. You have sharp pain on the outside of your foot, maybe the underside of your foot a little bit. So when you with weight-bearing, I'm yep, assuming, weight -bearing, maybe right out walking. here, that'd be the outside? Yep. Um, and you also may try to walk with your foot turned out because it's more comfortable. You're, oh, so you're you put more pressure yeah, on, on the, the medial inside. or the inside yeah. of the sole. It, it occurs with people who have flat feet mm. and after ankle sprains, it's very common. Sure. Did you know sure. that, Brad? No, I did not know uh, that. We were Bob. talking about, you could walk on uneven ground. And yeah, could throw the that makes off. a lot of sense. But an ankle sprain makes sense to me too, because that could throw the cuboid off. Sure. So Anytime you twist or uh, mobilize Brad, that I'm going to have you grab the pen because I'm going to have you point out uh, the different uh, bones here. So we got the bones. This is the outside of the foot. Mm -hmm. Now, this right here is the fifth metatarsal. So that's a long, narrow bone. And it goes yeah. right up to the, the pinky toe, the smallest toe, the fifth one. I've seen people develop stress fractures in that, by the way. Runners. Right. Yep. There's one that uh, where the perineal tendon connects oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. And there's a name for that, but I can't think of it right now. But that's per another perineal story. Perineal tendon. Well, though, for the fracture there, but... Oh, for the fracture. Yeah, okay. don't worry about it. That's All right, that then the uh, cuboid bone. Can you see yep. that? So it's actually, it's an odd-shaped bone. You really can't well, see Well, cuboid means square, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's... you got to use your imagination, square. but it is. You know, it attaches to actually the fifth and the fourth uh, metatarsal, right. and right. also to the calcaneus. calcaneus. And that's what we want to show, too, is the calcaneus, which moves, uh, especially in this rotational fashion. Right. And it can also abduct right. or adduct. Probably not that much, but a not little bit. Not that much, right. Now, this bone, this cuboid, can get pushed up. Yep. I don't know if we can do that at all here. It, there we go. It's not necessarily a large distance. No. You no. may see it, but probably not. I'm exaggerating. Mm -hmm. So, Or it could get pushed down, kind sure. of push sublux down or subluxed up. So we're going to work on is actually we're going to wiggle it back and mm -hmm. forth. And just try to get. Because it wants to go back into yeah, place. Yeah, it wants to go back into place. Right. Very good. And if you get the right it. pressure in the right direction, it'll probably just kind of pop, and you'll know it. It's going to feel good. Yeah. So you can also wiggle the fifth metatarsal yep. because it attaches into there. So that we're going to show you how to find these on your foot. So we're going to try to mobilize this joint bone, you know, this, this one, bone, and, and the calcaneus, since that plays a, such a large role too. So right. we're going to get that moving. So there's three ways to approach this, and that's what yep. we're going to show. So, and we want to make sure these all are all moving the way they should. Because right. if if you mobilize the cuboid, but this one still isn't moving like it should, or this one, mm -hmm. you're still going to have pain. Yep. yep. So Mobilization. So the first thing we want to do is you want to make sure you test it first. 
So before you do any of this, walk a little bit and just say, oh, what is my pain at? Zero to 10, maybe it's a three. Um, and so typically when you put weight and you walk through it, that's where you're going to feel that little spike in the pain. Let's say it goes up to a seven over 10, 10 being the worst. Then we're going to do a treatment, right? Yep. And some people can actually do this, Brad, turn their foot out and yep. that brings it on too. Sure. Yep. So, uh, all right. So I, we've, Brad colored my foot. And so you can see here the fifth metatarsal. Right here. And you can see the cuboid. Right there. And the calcaneus. So if you want to find the fifth metatarsal, you, you, you start by the little toe and you go all the way down, you feel a bump here. Right. That's the end of it. Mm -hmm. So you can just grab onto that with your fingers, thumb and finger, and just wiggle it back up and down. Now you got to relax the foot. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm counterbalancing a little bit here too, Brad. Yeah, so you're stabilizing the rest right. of the forefoot with this hand. Yeah. So you're actually gripping pretty tight here with yeah. both hands. Yep, yeah, pretty good. And uh, you can see now, you can't see because the skin is there, but there's, you know, there's some motion going on there. And any healthy foot, there should be a little motion there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you're right. If you compare the involved side to the non involved side, if you're good at it, mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell the difference. Right, right. Um, as a therapist, you, you develop those skills. Now the cuboid, the same thing. You can grab onto that with the thumb. Can you see that? So he's getting his thumb right over that bone. And I'm going to wiggle that up and down. Yep. So in his middle finger on the bottom side, he's trying push, to pinch push, that yeah, bone. Yeah, pushing it up in. So you can do these as many as 30 times. Sure. That's how often you can do it. Your fingers will probably get a little tired. Yep. And if you want to, you can even do both at the same time a little bit. So grab the cuboid yeah, and, and that fifth metatarsal and yep. get some motion between With them. With all these, if you have started having increased pain, stop. Yeah. I, I don't want, this is not a, a painful maneuver. We want yeah. it to feel better. Right. So, all right. The last one's a little more difficult to do. The calcaneus. Um, the calcaneus. Yes. Uh, I think the easiest way to do this is to, to cross your feet over. Yep. Got your ankle on your knee here. And I'm going to pull on the calcaneus that way. Downwards yep. if you were standing. And then I'm going to rotate it while I'm doing that. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, if we look at that, yeah. we're, we're trying to get that motion yeah, in. Yeah, but we're distracting yeah. a little bit before. Yep. So pulling it down. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, this one to do to yourself is a little challenging. Yeah, because you can actually do it by putting your leg off the edge of the uh, chair. Yeah. You could, and you can actually pull like this yeah. and then turn it also. And if you could, if your left arm was three feet longer, you could reach behind <laughs> yeah. it. But obviously that's It is a work. difficult one to do, but it, it can pay off. Sure. I mean, it is helpful to get that cuboid moving. You know, but one of the first two would, and then what would hopefully do it. But then after you get done, it's you important stand to up again post test. And, yep. And say, oh, it is a little bit better or it's not. And right. Maybe that's not what you have then. Maybe it's right. not cuboid syndrome. Or that. So I'd walk the same pattern you walked on the pretest, walk again, and then you were at a seven before. If it dropped down to a two or a three, you've probably mobilized it very successfully. If nothing happened or the pain got worse, uh, it wasn't successful. Right. And, and generally, the cuboid is going to be tender. I mean, you're going to feel tenderness mm. when you – Push it up and down. Sure. And it sure. should start to feel better, though. Right, right. Uh, again, not get worse and worse and worse. Now, well, to prevent this, Brad, we, you can do a calf stretches. Oh, sure. Calf stretches. And you can also use, like, a more of a rigid shoe or orthotic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because that prevents that, that bone from, you know, it, it's holding that bone in place. Right, but right. Let's say, for example, on, on the, your ligaments, you have loose ligaments here, and your bone wants to move up and yep. down and all around. Uh, a stiff orthotic, can you see how that would support it Yeah, and stop so, it from... So moving. that's the insert. You can buy those at online, any shoe yep. store. Get one that's a little more rigid. Sometimes I like to go to a store so you can actually feel it if it's rigid, semi-rigid. Some are plastic, yep. some are soft and mushy. Um, yeah, Bob, did we, we got a little time here. Did we want to show them that it could be Morton's Neuroma? Oh, sure. Sure. And, and we've got we've got a couple videos so on that, Martin's too. So Morton's Neuroma can be between the... Am I right? The second and third? Right. And the third and fourth. Right. Right. Third and fourth, I believe, but it it, it can be between either one. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a nerve bundle. Right. It's on the bottom of the foot. And one of the 
telling signs of that, Brad, it feels like your sock is rolled up under your foot. Yeah. And it that, can be very painful when you walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you follow, you have to kind of figure out where the, the metatarsals are. Let's show them on your foot, Bob. This is a barefoot anyways. Yeah. So the metatarsals run down to here, yeah. you know, on here. And you actually going to squeeze between the two. Yeah. Uh, so here's the second one and the third one. You go right, right down there. You find it right below the pad of the foot, typically. Yeah, you'll mm. find it. I mean, if it's yeah. sore, you'll. Yeah, know. It, it it you hit the spot and it makes your eyes open up and you might even say a bad word. So on my wife, it was between the third and fourth, and we pushed on that and ooh, mm. doggy. <laughs> but you know that's not real hard to fix either. Uh, if you. We're going to do a video on it because yes. I'm fixing my wife's now. We figured out what it is, and that's yeah. what we're going to do. Brad's uh, been guiding us on this one because he's got Morton's Neuroma. Right, right. but uh, it's uh, successfully it. treated. Yeah. So, yeah, Bob and Brad and Morton's Neuroma, and we'll give you some hints in uh Yeah, remedies. we got some old videos if you can't wait. Right. But uh, check out a new one within the next couple of weeks. There you go. Thanks for watching. Be careful.